trying to code Pong, and I'm I'm going to try to break these videos down into, you know, smaller steps uh, so that you can follow along easily and continue building as you follow the videos. The um, we you know we really normally would spend some time really trying to think about what our plan is to uh, to do this but it kind of being a guided build where I'm showing you how it's built means that I'm not necessarily tackling this I, I, I'm definitely trying to go through steps in a way that I hope will be you know as clear as possible so you know still it's it's important to have a plan so let's just kind of take a quick look at what those that could look like. Uh, why don't we start with drawing? So we'll try drawing the game screen uh, the way that we saw, um, the way that we just looked at in the, the quick sketch. So we'll draw the paddles and the ball and we'll put some score on the screen and maybe a title. And then I think we can get the paddles moving using the keyboard. Uh, the ball moving, of course the ball bouncing off the, uh, let's, let's go with the top and the bottom first, and the ball bouncing off the paddle, and um, we would need scoring at that point as well, resetting the ball, end of game when the uh, player reaches, uh, you know, say a preset score, and restarting the game, some kind of button. We should have some kind of instructions on there that also has a start of game. So we'll try that at the end. I think that's all the basic stuff that, uh, by resetting the ball, I'm thinking of reserving after someone scores a point, then the ball has to be reset. But we'll go right back to here. So if we break this up into actual, you know, one video each, that might be kind of what the videos look like. So we're going to start with drawing the game screen. And uh, I think for purposes of um, working together on this, I think it would be great if we all had the same screen size. I know 800 by 600 is kind of small. Um, but it actually, you know, it kind of enables, it helps with trying to share my screen and kind of document this as we do it. So I, I would ask that you would try it at this screen size as well. You're welcome to change it, but your calculations will change. So just be aware of that. Okay, so um, if we're, you know, drawing something that's going to be animated, we'll uh, we'll think about that in a moment. Let's just get the paddles on the screen. So there should be a paddle around here somewhere. In fact, let's just do that quick trick with mouse press. So uh, you'll remember that uh, in processing, we need these functions, set up and draw. You need to uh, have a setup that processing will run once. There may be some initial global variables up here. Global variables. Uh, and some kind of state that we, you know, we set up here at the beginning. But um, then setup runs, uh, you know, a moment later after we do global variables. Setup will run the size of the size function will initialize the screen. And then the draw function will run repeatedly at the frame rate, say 60 frames per second. And after, in between draw loops or draw functions being run, mouse pressed or any of the events corresponding to things that the user has done, those will be called and, you know, they'll be kind of queued up until the draw loop finishes and the screen updates. And then any kind of things like mouse press, key presses, things like that, those will be executed before the next draw loop. So a really useful thing to do if we're just trying to draw the screen is get the um, coordinates of where we want things to appear. So if I'm thinking of top right for the paddle being around here, say, then I can just click that and I'll try the same thing over here. So here's two pairs of coordinates. I'll stop my sketch 
and I can just grab these and throw them back into my screen. So draw paddles. So this is going to be the left player and we'll draw a rectangle at those coordinates. We'll make it uh, so it's x and y, so this variable here is kind of the x dimension, which is width. Uh, we'll make them not too wide, and we'll see what that looks like. And we'll do the same size for the right player. Okay, so the left player will make player 1, and the right player will make player 2. And, you know, those look like decent size. I'm fine with that. So we'll just move on. We will draw the ball. And you know later it's going to be important that we kind of keep all of the drawing together. I like to do updating all the variables, checking for collisions, all that stuff. And then I like to do the drawing afterwards. And so we'll just keep going. So the ball in true um, original Pong was a rectangle, but you can make it a, uh, you can make an ellipse if you like. I'm going to keep mine old school. <laughs> so there's the ball in the center of the screen. And how about some scoring? Um, it's a really good idea to keep your documentation up on your screen. Oh, we got it here. Sorry, my computer when it's doing screen captures is pretty slow. So I'm looking for the text command. The um, easiest way to do this, you can print, we've probably done that before, you can print to the screen um, you know, and that, that information appears down here like I did with the mouse press. But that's not, um, that's not going to work really for putting things on the canvas. And the way we do that is mm -hmm. using this command just called text. And um, you can just grab some of this and throw it into your, uh, throw it into your code and just see what happens. Um, we can change the fonts, we can uh, use different colors, there's, there's a word up here. And look, it's kind of all pixelated. Um, and we can load fonts and things like that. But you know what, for today, I'm not going to worry about that too much. Let's just try changing the text size. The problem with the, with the text sometimes is getting the fonts built and loaded properly. So that's the only reason I, I think we should deal with that in another video. So this will be player one and this will be player two. This will matter later. Uh, you know, obviously I'm just putting in dummy text right now. Um, I'll put it over top of the paddle. So this is 35 and this is 7.45, I might have to tweak that later. <clears throat> Excuse me. So that gets us started. And how about a dashed line down the center of the screen? Um, you know, I'll leave that for a exercise for you. I would think of that as rectangles. So here I'm drawing a single rectangle that would be in the center of the screen, so x is 400. And y, well, uh, y is going to be initially at the top of the screen, so I'll make a rectangle at 0. I'll make it pretty thin, so it is kind of like a line, and I'll make it not too tall. And, you know, that might be okay. Maybe I just want it to be all white, so I'll make the stroke white. And this is going to affect the rest of the sketch, so the stroke is going to be gone from everything else, because a moment later when it redrew the paddle, there, there was still no stroke. So if you want the stroke back, just for those parts, you can initialize it here. 
and back to the black. Okay, so we have black stroke on these things and no stroke there. And, you know, this rectangle needs to be copied multiple times. How about a for loop that generates values of y that get replaced in here that kind of go all the way down? And it looks like it's not quite lined up with the ball. You, you know, you could tweak this uh, and figure out how to get that kind of all sorted out. So that's, I'm leaving that for you to finish. And I think we're done, actually. So we've drawn the screen. I'll stop the video, and uh, we'll move on to the next step in the next